All right. Um, so hello, everyone. Like I said, uh, my name is Gia. I'm a project manager at ATT Cities. And I'm here to talk about uh, one of our programs called Ontario Community Change Makers. It's a micro grant and leadership program. Um, but before that, uh, let me quickly introduce 880 Cities to you. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization based in Toronto. Uh, our mission is to improve the quality of life for people in cities, no matter their age, ability, or socioeconomic status. We believe that if we make cities uh, safe, accessible, and great for an eight-year-old and an 80-year-old, then they, then they will be safe, accessible, and great for everyone. Uh, we bring people together to enhance mobility and public space so that together we can create more vibrant, healthy, and equitable communities. And um, OCC, or Ontario Community Change Makers, is a somewhat new program of ours. We developed it with uh, the Balsam Foundation to encourage young uh, civic innovators in Ontario to uh, create change in their communities. So OCC is a fellowship and microgrant program for young civic uh, innovators aged 19 to 35. Uh, with bold ideas to activate public space, enhance civic engagement, and or foster social inclusion. So uh, in this program, we are uh, looking for ideas that fall uh, under one or more of these three themes. So the three themes are uh, activating public space, enhancing civic engagement, uh, and fostering social inclusion. So um, like activating public space, uh, that's pretty clear, but uh, public spaces are areas or places that are open and accessible to all, uh, sidewalks, parks, uh, plazas, trails, community centers, they're all public spaces. And, um, and uh, we are looking for project ideas that uh, create uh, renewed energy, life, and vibrancy to these spaces in local communities. Uh, I can give you examples of you know, these projects um, later on. Um, the other bucket we are looking at, or the other theme we are looking at, is enhancing civic engagement. Um, bringing people and communities together to address common challenges or increase awareness of important issues is uh, a fundamental aspect of civic engagement. So in, in this regard, we are looking for project ideas that uh, get people to take action and increase community participation in civic processes. And the last theme is fosters, uh, fostering social inclusion. Um, and with this one, as you all know, uh, our society has many barriers, both visible and, inv and, and invisible, uh, preventing marginalized communities from accessing public spaces and participating in public life. So we are looking to support projects that, uh, that can address those barriers and seek to foster social inclusion for people, regardless of gender, gender identity, race, ethnicity, age, uh, sexual orientation, or, or uh, socioeconomic status. Um, and it doesn't have to be all three themes. It just has to be one or more of these three themes. And if you become an Ontario community change maker, what do you get? You get uh, $5,000 in seed funding to implement one community project in one year. Uh, you get ongoing guidance and coaching from 880 cities, and you uh, will get to join a supportive and inspiring network of peers from across Ontario. Uh, and um, so, uh, We've been uh, doing these monthly meetups with the change makers. So we, we launched our first year in 2021. Uh, that was our first batch of cohorts. And uh, one of you, Nitharsan, is uh, part of that cohort. And we've been doing these monthly meetups where we meet and exchange ideas and you know, uh, talk about uh, each of our or each of their projects. So, um, and I think that's a very, um, you know, um, uh, a helpful uh, thing for uh, the change makers because they get to uh, hear from everyone, get get ideas from everyone. So that's the kind of uh, network you get to be part of when you um, when you become a change maker. And then uh, briefly about uh, who can apply or eligibility criteria. Uh, so uh, one is that you must be uh, 19 to 35 years old at the time of application. You must be able to attend all three days of the studio. So this time we have uh, three days of the studio. I, I will explain more later. Uh, applicants must reside in the province of Ontario or in a First Nations territory within the provincial boundary of Ontario during the time of project implementation. 
um, project must take place in the province of Ontario or in a First Nations territory within the pro uh, provincial boundary of Ontario. And applicants must propose a community project that activates public space or enhance civic engagement and or foster social inclusion. Uh, and uh, regarding the studio, uh, we will uh, arrange support for participants with technical barriers. Um, it could be a laptop or it could be, uh, you know, like uh, noise cancelling headphones or something like that. And since uh, this time our studio has an in-person component, so participants uh, must show proof of vaccination to participate in the program. Uh, so like I said, the studio this time is going to be three days. Um, day one is going to be a half day virtual session. So uh, normally on day one, we do an orientation and that sort of thing. Day two is going to be uh, in person. It's a uh, full day and uh, it's going to be in Toronto. And uh, yeah, this will be a bunch of uh, workshops, group activities, that sort of thing. And uh, day three is um, a half day virtual session on August 20th. And that will be a wrap up sort of um, session. And uh, yeah, this is going to be, uh, well, something that looks like this is going to be the location of uh, in-person uh, in, in person, uh, component of the studio. So I hope this entices people to apply. Um, and if you know of, uh, if, if you know someone who would want to apply, I, I hope, uh, you know, uh, this will encourage you to <laughs> uh, tell them about the program. This is going to be in Toronto at the island. So, uh, and uh, like I said before, attending the studio is mandatory. And since the program has an in-person component, all participants must be vaccinated. So um, in 2021, we selected uh, these 20 wonderful change makers uh, from across the province. We had uh, change makers from uh, Windsor, from uh, Sudbury, uh, Ashburn, Ottawa, Markham, Toronto, Brampton, Hamilton. Um, and they're all working on their projects right now. They're at different stages of implementing them. Uh, you can uh, check out, uh, so we are actually publishing blog posts now um, to update everyone on their progress. So, so you can check out our website. I will share uh, the links uh, soon in the chat. Uh, but yeah, we've been publishing blog posts. You can read all about their projects and updates there. Uh, but I have some slides to show you what uh, our change, market, uh, change makers have been up to. So this is um, Cheryl Louis. Uh, so she is, uh, uh, her project is the Pollinator Pathway and uh, this is located in Markham. So um, for, for this one, uh, Cheryl had to get permits from the city to uh, not acquire, but do uh, create a pollinator garden on this land. And uh, she's been, she, she just sent me this, uh, poster for the planting day. So she's 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 organized the planting day to uh, plant at the pollinator garden with the community, and uh, they're also actually using native plants to do this. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to give you an idea of what kind of projects we 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 are looking to support and what kind of uh, work the change makers have been doing. So you know it would involve uh, getting permits from the city. Um, and then uh, getting the community involved in in your project. Um, and she, she, she also recruited volunteers. She had branding done for her project, uh, that sort of thing. So this is a good example of how you can activate public space and also enhance civic engagement you know, uh, in, uh, in the process. But I also want to tell you that it is not just about the project. It is also about uh, you as a change maker. So we want to invest in you as a change maker as well. And then we have Nathusen's project. So um, Nathusen's project is called It's Nearby. I am thinking you might all know about it or might have heard about it. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, Nathusen's project uh, focuses on highlighting the history of parks and green spaces in uh, Scarborough through photos on a web map and uh, his, his project also has an uh, AR uh, uh, app uh, that's also part of the project. So this is a great example of activating public space as, uh, and, and also engaging people while, while doing that. 
This is another uh, change maker and project that we're supporting. The change maker is uh, Jessica Macassett Bondi. The project is Activate Transit Windsor SX. So this is uh, this was a transit. I mean, this is a transit advocacy organization. They were a grassroots organization, but they were able to formalize their organization with the support that OCC provided. Um, so they've been surveying transit riders um, in the community through various methods. Um, so this is Jessica, uh, and they surveyed over 600 people in the community, and they analyzed and visualized the data, and they were actually able to uh, get transit back on everyone's mind in Windsor. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, they, they've been able to create a community mandate recently. And I, I believe they are uh, trying to get people to sign up and you know, um, creating that conversation in, in time for the municipal election. Uh, so this is also like a great example of civic engagement and how that's so important for, our, um, for all the public services that you know, we use. Uh, this is Meliha Horzum and her project is Project Green. So her project aims to get young Muslims more passionate about their environment. Uh, this is located in Hamilton. And in, in the last uh, you know, few months, she was able to complete like some tree planting events. They started a milk bag weaving group in the Islamic school in Hamilton. And now the mosque also wants to do the same. Uh, and uh, the like, she she talks about how her, the the community is very excited to join these events, and they were like waiting for an opportunity to do these kind of events and join these kind of initiatives. Um, so this is also a good example of activating public space as well as fostering social inclusion. And another thing that I find very uh, rewarding or nice to see with OCC is that. A lot of these change makers keep helping out each other. So like Meliha and Cheryl, who's doing the pollinator garden, they've been collaborating on, you know, uh, on the side on different things. Uh, and I'll talk about another change maker from Windsor and um, Jessica, who I just introduced before. Uh, and that other change maker from Windsor has also been able to help each other. So there is that sort of um, community, you know, being built also with this program. And I think a lot of it is because it's happening in Ontario, so uh, and and everyone's you know close to each other, so which helps in that in in giving support to each other. Uh, this is Leah Walker. Uh, Leah um, created this program called Lavender Ceramics uh, in Hamilton uh, as a wellness space for queer youth uh, with the creative outlet of working with clay. Uh, there's a strong focus on building community and fostering social inclusion. And uh, so Leah for this program developed the program, hired an art-based psychotherapist, uh, hired other queer artists to assist uh, the, the development of the program. And for um, marketing the program, they advertised it by distributing posters to high schools and post-secondary institutions, as well as queer community groups. Um, so that's one example of fostering, uh, fostering social inclusion. And uh, yeah, this is the change maker, the other change maker from Windsor. Uh, her name is Caitlin Dwyer, and her project is called Project Read, which means uh, which which stands for rewarding experiences, adventures, and discoveries. So uh, Caitlin is an educator and also runs an after-school program for youth in at-risk neighborhoods. And her project um, aims to give children in low-income areas access to free books through free book fairs held at schools and community centers. So she's been collecting books through donations and been uh, purchasing lightly used books um, uh, to, you know, to, uh, for uh, the book fairs that she's uh, hosting. And uh, she's also building uh, free little uh, libraries in different communities. Uh, so a, a great example of uh, fostering social inclusion. Um, and we are just uh, you know, happy and proud and privileged to support these people uh, who have these amazing ideas, drive and passion to uh, implement them. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give you like a peek into um, some of these projects that these change makers are doing.
Um, so we have a website. It's called Ontario Community Changemakers.org. So uh, there um, you will have all the details of the program, um, uh, details about change makers from 2021, uh, the studio that is uh, the, the studio for year two, uh, and also uh, about how to apply. So if you, uh, if you are inspired to apply to this program, please do. If you are inspired to tell someone about this program, please do. We have a website and um, the application deadline is June 19th, uh, 2022 uh, at 11.59 uh, p.m. Um, and this is the URL for application, but I can share all this on the chat as well. And uh, there are two ways to apply. So there is an online application form, which you can find on our website, um, but there is also a possibility of downloading a form uh, and filling it and then emailing or mailing it to us. Uh, the only condition is that we have to uh, receive it by June 19th. Uh, we also have an FAQ page, so uh, check that out. If you have more questions, we might have uh, answered your questions there. And I just want to leave you with my contact information. There is my contact information as well as we have an OCC support team contact information. Uh, you can contact us at both these email addresses and that there is our website again. And that is it. So uh, if you have any questions, I would love to answer them.